up so we're gonna talk about how did we meet honey so we'll see Okay, let's start. So, me and my husband, uh, almost 25 years ago, uh, that's how did we meet. So, my aunt, uh, Amor, introduced me to this called Simpatica and made a bed box. Then I received a lot of letters and then but the only person that came first is my Greggy. So uh, actually when we met, uh, uh, when he came to Philippines, it was exciting because he said he's coming, but I don't know when. He said he's just coming and meet other girls. So talk about it, hon. How did you get to my place? Well, it's a little bit unusual because the town that she lives in, on the address of the town, you have the word Cotabato. So I figured that it's near to Cotabato City. In reality, it's not even close. So I flew into Cotabato, which is now sometimes considered a critical place. Yeah. You know, there's lots of uh, violent. Muslim uh, violence or whatever. So I arrived there uh, off the plane, and I said to somebody, well, where's, where's uh, Magpet? This is the place I, she was staying. Yeah, you know? I stayed with my grandma in Magpet because after I graduated high school, uh, my aunt got married, and then, uh, so she decided to get me to take care of my grandma, so that's where I live, in Magpet. All right, honey? So anyway, I get on this bus, and it's really full. I mean, you know, the, the seats are jammed with extra people, and there's 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 people sitting in the uh, in the aisle. You know, so where you walk. There's chickens and pigs. Chickens and pigs, <laughs> and there's people on the roof, I think. And yeah. uh, so it's like a six-hour uh, bus ride with people all sitting on top of each other. I, I was I was kind of in shock. Yeah. And so we're going and we got near to the place where she was and I was riding what you call a jeepney, what, uh, transferred from the bus to the jeepney. Yeah. And all of a sudden the guy who's driving the jeepney puts his foot on the brake and the pedal goes to the floor. <laughs> and so he stops the... the he stops the jeepney and he tells everybody uh, the ride is over. Yeah. We weren't even close to, you know, where we were, our destination, you yeah. know, in, in the jeepney. And uh, so he lets all the passengers out. Yeah. But doesn't refund any money. He just lets the passengers out. We're just stranded in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And so just we're waiting for uh, another jeepney to come by. Yeah. So finally we got uh, another jeepney place. and, and we, we were on the way to uh, this place, Magnet, where, where uh, Marilyn is staying with her grandmother. And uh, somebody in the jeepney says, to, to me it's like a, a jeepney's like a little mini bus <laughs> and uh, with uh, bench seats. Parallel bench seats, and somebody says to me, "How come you're going, going to make but tur <laughs> tourists don't go there?" Yeah, it's really mountainy. You no, know? the road is so bad, bumpy. That time it wasn't fixed yet. It's not nowadays. It's all paid, but you know, like cement. But a uh, long time ago, man, this guy is very adventurous <laughs> to find the right one. <laughs> So we're riding on this uh, jeepney, and a woman says to me, 
you know, when she says to me, uh, why are you going? And I said, oh, I have a pen pal in, in Magpit. And so she says, oh, do you have a picture? And I said, yeah. So I pull a picture out of my, my wallet or whatever and give it to her. She looks at it. But instead of giving it back to me, she passes it to every person in the jeepney. Yeah. You know, like uh, something yeah. like 20 people looked at the picture. Yeah. And, uh, and then they were like, all of a sudden there's lots of conversation. You know, they're all looking and pointing and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, the girl says to me, she's the Mutya. She's the Mutya. Me, the Mutya. <laughs> so you didn't know that I was the Mutya. You're she's, getting, the Mutya you're is meeting. like, uh, you know, the beauty queen uh, for the area. Yeah. And uh, it turned out she had won several uh, beauty contests. And uh, Are so, you proud of me? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I get to the magpit and I go to the address where, where, that's that's on the uh, uh, on on uh, that I have, yeah. you know, and and I go to the door and I knock on the door and <clears throat> an older woman comes to the door. I guess it's my grandma, my grandmother, <laughs> and I'm trying to explain now. Where is Marilyn? But I she was at school. But she was at school. But yeah. the, grif, the grandmother is not expecting me at all. Yeah. And, and she uh, wasn't able to speak very good English either because you know she didn't she didn't even graduate elementary, I think. <laughs> so I sat on the porch for I think an hour and a half or yeah. something. Yeah. She had to uh, get my hand. <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't let me in. They left me on the porch. <laughs> and. Uh, so I waited there, and then uh, when uh, Marilyn came home, we met. Yeah, you know? I, I came, and I was surprised. Nobody told me. Somebody, he was in there coming because that time I don't even have a cell phone to, you know, like tell my grandma I'm coming home or my aunt. It was just, you know, different time. So when I came home, my aunt was so excited, waving at me. I said, "Why is she waving me? Hurry up!" And then here is the big man. It's <laughs> like, what? This is surprising to to see this guy really tall. He was six three, and I'm five three, and I was only eighteen years old, and you were like, what? Forty seven. Forty seven years old, and we're, I was so shocked. But that's how we started our. Uh, that's how we meet, and um, and then. Did you find me interesting, honey, when you first see me? I guess so. I, was... I married you. <laughs> <laughs> me, I was so scared because I wasn't very good in speaking English either. Because, you know, I was just starting college and I was trying to get be English. That's what I was trying to get. And, and here's the guy came. Uh, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I just told her that I'd be coming and sometime in the next three weeks, you know, so she yeah. didn't, didn't know. And, and of course, also, many uh, foreigners who say they're coming don't really come. Yeah, and I had you a know. lot of pen pals. They said they're coming, but, you know, this is the guy came. And now, 25 years after, Almost 25 years after we're here and happily <laughs> ever after. <laughs> after. Yeah. So my experience was that when I met, came, you know, the pen pals all knew I was coming, but they didn't know when. Yeah. And when I was at their house and they came home and saw me. Yeah. Most of them turned white. I mean, they, they yeah, looked like they were going to faint. Yeah. It was equivalent to somebody coming from another planet. Yeah. I mean, here I am, uh, light skinned, and and I'm a foot taller than most everybody around. Yeah. And I mean, if you're walking down the street, your head sticks way up above everybody else. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was really shocking to, uh, uh, especially for I knew what to expect, but the yeah. pen pal didn't quite didn't quite realize what it was going to be like when I knocked on their door. Yeah. So we've been, uh, you know. After we got married, and then we've been writing each other, we had to write pretty much almost every day because, you know, internet wasn't there before yet. 
and it's everything just written and it, it took a while to get the mail so a lot of the time the yeah. mail takes a month to arrive and then the the answer the response is a month to come back yeah it could be two months between communication yeah so it was really interesting but what really exciting to us when the first time I talked to my husband now <laughs> but the first time I talked to him when he said he's coming is I was so scared so I asked my aunt to talk to him <laughs> in the phone <laughs> he didn't know that until later of the year I said it was in me <laughs> I was I was so afraid but it's yeah, there was no time for yeah. letters to go back and forth, so I said, yeah. when you receive this letter, call, call me, collect, Yeah, and uh, they did, and I learned much later, maybe years later, yeah. that it, it was her aunt. <laughs> it was my to aunt, because I was so afraid that my English, I had to write everything down when I was talking to him when he get to Magpit, and so, yeah, that was the start of our love story. I was so young, and you're almost young then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was an interesting, it's interesting right. story. Yeah. So, so you guys uh, can uh, do this uh, adventure of our life. We stayed in the Philippines for a while. And we have a lot of adjustment because of the age gap, the culture, and you know, conversation of English. Um, it was hard for me and for him, and I wasn't able to. Uh, I think most of our problem before is uh, communicating because my understanding is different. I was more sensitive, easily offended, even it's not, you know don't need to but thankful and grateful to God now we're okay and what you could advise on to have a happily married well you know uh, one thing to realize that uh, when you go to another country is that their sense of humor yeah might be much different when you say something in jest yeah they could take it as a serious uh, put down you know a uh, uh, something offensive yeah and so you have to uh, you have to watch out for that you know yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> you have to you know hesitate a little bit sometimes before you say something because uh, you need to think if w what you're saying fits in with their culture yes you know? yeah I had to learn and you study a lot you studied before you go and just a, just a marriage even if it's somebody from your culture yeah you usually have to learn to overlook some things. Yes. You know, things that you don't think is the way you would do it, but it's not necessary to demand your spouse do it your way. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you, it's not going to work if you're opinionated and confrontational about everything. Yeah. And some people are. You know, some people are uh, that way, and that's why there's so many divorces. Uh, you just have to go with the flow and uh, see how things turn out, you know. That's and right. when you think back, many of the things you were uh, conflicted about, many of the things that you thought had to be done a certain way, yeah. later on you realize it didn't need to be. Yeah. You know, uh, it, uh, it's just uh, an opinion or a way of doing things that's different from yours, but it's not right and wrong. Uh -huh. It's uh, just different. Yeah. What a good advice, honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, so, yeah, so. Maybe next time we'll talk about the tremendous difficulty we had getting a visa. Yes, because that uh, time it was, it was so different. So. There were, there were complications a lot. Yeah. And uh, we had to, uh, it took years, you know, because yeah. of the. Com complication. uh, complications. Complications. Some people wouldn't have these complications, yeah. but, but I did, so, uh, you know. All right, guys, so my, my advice is, uh, you know, you have to accept the person. You have to love the person because nobody is perfect. We had differences, and that's what my husband said earlier. Sometimes you have to overlook 
what the things uh, you don't like to that person. But you know, we just, and then communication is very important. And uh, forgiveness, if um, you know one person make a, a mistakes, forgiveness. And sometimes, you know, we girls let things go too soon before we can forgive, but forgiveness is very important. And then always pray, always pray to God that everything, yes, understanding to each other, be there and in the relationship, be God is the center. So guys, we are here in our destination. So we'll talk some more next time. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas! <laughs> Thank you.